In this video, we're going to take a look at activity 3.1.6, open and closed loop systems. And specifically, we are going to look at the closed loop system that has been created now that we've been able to put a limit switch in. So I have added a limit switch here on my test bed. I have unplugged my original uh, limit switch and then plugged that one in its place. So you do want to make sure that uh, as we add the limit switch, you do want to follow along with the pictures and with the instructions here. So for example, I have my indicator bar right here as I turn my gear and the way that the limit switch is set up is when I turn it, I should hear an audible click, which means that it's clicking the limit switch. So it's going to actually go through and give us a feedback of one for that particular switch. So I'm actually going to move this gear back out here to the side a little bit and um, we can go ahead and start looking preparing our program because they want us to oscillate the motor each way 20 times and then it says the direction will use the light switch or the limit switch sensor input. So when we go into robot C, here's our program we, we have written and we're going to just double check a few things. Before I start going through too much, I want to determine what would be what direction does this standoff go. So if this starts to turn the way this test bed is set up, if this starts to turn clockwise, this is going to cause damage to our limit switch. So I want to make sure that it's going to turn counterclockwise so that way it actually goes and clicks the limit switch and we'll get a response from that sensor. So I'm going to go ahead and just download the robot. I'm not going to run this program. I'm going to use the debugger window just to see what direction it's going and I'm going to use a very small value to be able to to verify that. So I'm going to go to motors with PID and when I select the left motor I can go ahead and press 10 in there. I'm going to do a positive 10 to see what direction it turns and here I can start to see that it's very slow. Let's see if I can bump that up to 11 there's where it starts to turn. So I'm going to switch that back to zero. So before it starts to run into my limit switch here, uh, I'm going to turn my gear. So I know that the positive numbers are making it go clockwise. Negative numbers will make it go counterclockwise. So I'm just going to verify that direction. When I look at my code, I can see that the first thing I have it doing is it's going to go positive number means it's going to go clockwise. So I actually want to flip the directions. I want to do a negative 25 on the first one and then I want to do a positive 25 on the second start motor command. Now the other thing what I'm going to change while we're at it is we want this to respond to the limit switch. So I'm going to take out that first wait statement. We're going to add until touch of the limit switch and I can change the the comment here. saying that we're going to wait till the limit switch is pressed. I can grab that comment, copy it, and I'm going to replace it up here in the pseudocode. And that will switch our, our directions there. So now I'm going to go ahead and turn this gear. So I'm going to probably put it down right about where the 6 o'clock is. I know you're not going to be able to see that very well in this video right now just because of the way that my document camera is set up. But about down here toward the bottom at the 6 o'clock. So it's going to run until it goes through and clicks that limit switch and it's going to continue there. So this is a closed loop system. At the end of this, the indicator bar should wind up pretty close to where it started. So as it finishes out. So I'm going to go ahead and say download the robot. The other thing I might want to do is I'm going to check my sensors. So I'm going to go ahead and click my limit switch with my hand. Okay, I am getting a response from the limit switch, which is good. And I'm going to go ahead and run the program. Okay, so 
what we saw here with the program was that we had that the indicator bar stops at the very top, which is kind of the opposite of where it started. But if we run it one more time, you'll see that the indicator bar stops at the very top again. So if I was to run this a third time, I would see that's where, where it went through and will stop. So we see after two rotations or two loops of this program, this indicator bar stopped in the exact same place both times, meaning that we were able to get a closed loop system out of this, that our sensor was helping us kind of with the placement of that indicator bar. So it knew where to stop. So it would run until it touched the limit switch and then it would go back and then it would go until it touched the limit switch. So we had a, def a, same, a very similar defined point with the limit, limit switch every time we would go through and click it. So this would go through and as we take a look, our indicator bar stops in the same place as what it does if we do this twice. And then here you can answer a question about, all right, if we cycled this 120 times, it would probably run and end up being in the same spot again. But what would be some, maybe some problems and inefficiencies this process were caused if we had to run it for 24 hours a day for several days? There could be a lot of different things that happen. So, you know, as far as mechanical issues or, you know, if we, it was not uh, being observed and watched, you know, what would happen if something were to break, sensor fails, there's a lot of different factors that could go into it. So we're just going to go through and kind of let, you know, some of our, um, you know, thoughts kind of, you know, kind of think about different pr ap applications that this could go through and be used in. All right. So this will go through and finish up activity 3.1.6, open and close loop systems. And right now, as it stands, you're going to use everything that you've learned from all of the lesson activities for lesson 3.1 machine control and you're going to apply them into project 3.1.7 machine control design so hope, hope this has been very helpful for you and uh, can you know continue to enjoy doing programming and coding and if you again if you uh, you know check out any of other resources on my page to help out with project lead the way courses please do so